bats use ultrasound to detect both the distance and the velocity of prey. So a bat sends out a pulse of ultrasound, and that takes time to travel out to, say, a moth, and reflect back for the bat to hear it again. And from that time delay, the bat can know how far away that moth is. The sound bouncing off the moth is also Doppler shifted because of the motion of the, of the moth. And so the bat hears a frequency that is different than the frequency that the bat emitted. And from that change in frequency, the bat can determine whether the moth is coming towards it or away from it and how fast. So let's go ahead and do a specific numerical example. Let's say a bat sends out an ultrasound pulse with a frequency of 76.5 kilohertz. And that sound bounces off a moth that is 7 meters away, moving at a speed of 2 meters per second directly away from the bat. What is the time delay of the echo, and what is the frequency of the echo the bat hears? Let's do the easy one first, finding the distance to the moth. Velocity is distance over time, so the time is equal to the distance over the velocity. And the only real trick to this problem is that the moth being 7 meters away, the distance is going to be 14 meters. That is, the sound travels a round trip. And so we need to double whatever the distance to the moth is. So the sound travels 14 meters, the sound is traveling at 343 meters per second, and we get rounding 0.041 seconds, or we can say 41 milliseconds as the time delay for the echo to come back to the bat. And let's real quick draw a picture. We have a bat, we have a moth. My artistic skills are such that I'm not even going to try to draw them as anything than just boxes. We have the sound traveling out from the bat, which then hits the moth and then reflects back to the bat. Now in situations like this where the sound is going out and hitting a moving object and bouncing back, we can't just use the standard Doppler shift equation. The reason for that is that essentially the moving object here, the moth, is re-emitting the waves that have uh, hit it from the bat. And so in a sense we could calculate the frequency heard by the moth, which will be the frequency that gets re-emitted back towards the bat. And so the V of the bat, which I'm just going to label V, serves as both the V of the observer in terms of the sound waves hitting the moth, and then in the re-radiating process back towards the bat, that V serves as V source. So our equation here is going to be V observed by the bat after the echo is going to be the emitted frequency V sound plus or minus V and V sound minus or plus V and the V of the moth is going to appear on both the top and the bottom. In this case because the moth is moving away we're going to use the minus sign on the top and we're going to use the plus sign on the bottom of the fraction. So we're going to have 76.5 kilohertz times 343 meters per second minus 2 meters per second over 343 plus 2 meters per second. And we end up with 75.6 kilohertz. Of course, in real life, the bat is doing the exact opposite calculation. The bat doesn't know the position and the speed or velocity of the moth, but is instead measuring the return frequency and the time delay, and from those, perceiving the distance and the velocity of the moth. Regarding the Doppler shift equation, 
with the same V on both the top and the bottom serving as V observer and V source. If you have a sound wave bouncing off a moving object, you're going to have to use this little twist in the Doppler shift equation for problems not only involving bats and moths, but for instance, uh, a submarine sending out a sonar pulse uh, and that pulse bouncing off another submarine or a uh, ultrasound transducer, for instance, used in medical imaging. Uh, ultrasound will bounce off of blood cells that are moving through arteries or veins, and so they can be used to actually uh, detect the blood flow within the circulatory system. And also radar, where a radar installation sends out radio pulses. Of course, this isn't sound. It's electromagnetic waves moving at the speed of light. Those radio waves bounce off an airplane or a missile or other object. In the case of weather radar, that might just be a storm system. And the uh, velocity appears in both the top and the bottom in all of these situations.